Hello, this is Matt from Tracy and Matt.co.uk and here we are looking at the Sony Xperia Tablet Z and we'll do a quick unboxing video and a little look at the device before we head off and do our review. So the tablet immediately on top, it's pretty large, although it's a 10.1 inch display, um, being that sort of 16-9 aspect ratio lends itself to being quite a large tablet, but we'll come back to it in just a second. And also in the box we have a couple of manuals, so we have the startup guide, uh, a little addendum to the manual there and the SAR information. We have a UK charger, which is the typical sort of folding one that uh, uh, Sony are bundling with their devices at the moment and it has the just the standard USB socket on the other end and then we have a USB micro USB uh, sync charge cable that's all there is in the box um, there's an area here that I think that's just typically for um, the instruction manual but um, there's no headset or anything like that in the box um, just the device so let's pop all these bits out of the way so let's switch to um, have a look at the device again then so as I've already mentioned 10.1 inch display um, it's fairly high resolution it's a 1920 by 1200 pixel display so um, reasonably high res unfortunately I don't well we're obviously not the first people to review this actual tablet because we've got a number of scratches and marks on the screen which is a bit unfortunate uh, however that said there is a uh, scratch resistant coating on the screen um, although it doesn't seem to have been terribly effective because somebody either that or has taken a key to it. Nevertheless, let's move on. Um, around the device then, so on this side we have the power button and a, what looks like a little cover there, there we go. Uh, the headphone socket is under a little cover and the cover does have a little grommet on the inside, just a little rubber cover just to keep the dust and water out. This is an IP57 rated tablet. So it's uh, dust and water resistant, but unlike the Xperia phones uh, in the range that are IP58, being only IP57 it's not rated for underwater use or anything like that, so you can't submerge it, it's just um, resistant rather than proof. Uh, there we have the little volume control, and there's uh, what looks to be probably a little LED next to that as well, but that's the up and down volume control. There's also a little connector there which uh, we believe is for external charging grill there I'll bring that a bit closer hopefully you can pick it out which is the one of the loudspeakers around to the bottom there's also another grill so it's possible the speaker being in the corner just emit in both directions another little cover which um, isn't the easiest thing to open let's try it that way around so another little cover there which is the micro USB um, sync charge connector and uh, not a great deal, so oh, there's another bit on this side. These uh, little covers aren't the easiest and most obvious things to uh, to see and open. There we go, another cover there, which uh, is over our micro SD memory card, as you can see there. Memory card goes in that bit there. Uh, around to the other side, again, we've got on this corner, we do have those two speaker grills. So we emit on both sides, nothing really other than that on there. And along the top, uh, not a lot else to see really. There's uh, again what looks like uh, a little LED there, a couple of little holes which are presumably for microphone, and what appears to be an infrared port there. Yeah, that's the that is the infrared port there on the uh, on the side. Um, and we're back to the beginning really. Uh, just will point out on the front we have a two megapixel camera, or two point two megapixel actually for the sort of video conferencing and that kind of stuff. And then round on the back, we do have another camera, which is an 8.1 megapixel autofocus, no, no flash on the back of the uh, Tablet Z at the, at, uh, on there, but uh, just the 8.1 megapixel, that is autofocus. Uh, it does support uh, geotagging, because we do have built-in GPS uh, with assisted GPS support. And NFC there as well, there's a little NFC logo. Um, popping around to the back, let me see, uh, where's that power button? Let's see if we can power up. There we go. So we'll just let that power up while uh, while it is starting up. Uh, run down the rest of the specification for you. So in terms of size, 266 millimeters in the uh, width and 172 millimeters tall. Exceptionally thin. Once again, like the other Xperia devices in the uh, the range at the moment, the uh, Z uh, Z Z1 and uh, the Z Ultra. 
Um, the tablet is extremely thin, so we are seven point. No, we aren't. We are six point nine millimeters thick. Um, extremely thin. Does wonder if it's a little fragile, but if it seems fairly rigid, probably best not to snap it though. Uh, Four hundred and ninety-five grams. Again, feels quite light. Um, not as light as the uh, Kindle Fire HDX uh, eight point nine, but obviously we're a little bit larger anyway. Um, but it is still pretty lightweight at. Uh, um, just over a pound basically, 495 grams, so pretty uh, pretty impressive. It's LED backlit uh, IPS display, and uh, no it's not, it's LED backlit LCD, uh, which is 1920 by 1200 pixels, kind of already mentioned. Uh, in terms of rest of spec, well we've got uh, 16 or 32 gigabyte models, uh, this is, I don't know which one we have actually, we'll look at that in a moment, uh, but there are 16 or 32 gig models available. Uh, they all have two gig of internal RAM, and support up to 64 gig micro SD memory cards with the slot that we've already seen. Uh, wireless LAN supports 802.11 BG and N standards with dual band DLNA Wi Fi hotspot modes. Bluetooth 4.0 with A2DP support. Um, GPS with assisted GPS, GLONASS. And in there is also a quad core 1.5 gigahertz Snapdragon processor inside. It's a quad core 1.5. Um, so we'll do a benchmark on that and see how that performs in a moment as well. In terms of the OS, uh, we're shipping with uh, 4.1.2 according to spec, but uh, again, we'll just take a look at that in a moment as well. And uh, there is a, a, a claimed upgrade to 4.4 KitKat uh, in on the way as well. So I think that covers sort of kind of the basics of the uh, the hardware specification. So let's just uh, take a look on the device. Swipe up to unlock. So we'll select our language. Obviously, you can see all the notifications down the bottom, and we'll just nip through these as quickly as possible. We will connect to a wireless network. We'll go ahead and do that now. A really large QWERTY keyboard, as you come to expect, um, will is full touchscreen capacitive, obviously, um, and does support up to ten key, uh, ten fingers, if you like, um, on the multi-touch. So let me just go and connect. There we are. We are connected. So let's go ahead. I'm going to skip as much of these things. I'm not going to set up any accounts just at the moment either. And we're ready to go. I just want to get into the UI, agree to these bits and pieces. And there we go. So uh, anybody that's seen any of the Xperia range of devices before will recognize the interface. It's fairly similar and also even the, even the um, wallpaper. So at the home screen here, we have uh, camera, Walkman, album, movies, Sony Select, Play Store. As uh, icons down the bottom, obviously the time in the centre. Notification area at the top, we can, uh, well, well, we've got, actually got uh, Google search for voice search camera and uh, we are able to launch uh, Chrome there as well. We've got our apps in the corner and then we can swipe across and then we do have uh, a series of active widgets there. So we've got audio, although well, speakers are actually pretty good. And they are stereo in both corners, so that's pretty cool. It isn't just a dummy one on the other side, so that's good. And keep going, we've got a blank panel. Actually, one of the other things we've got here is a media. So let's just see if we can... Is that media or just stills? No, it's just stills. But again, that does demonstrate the quality of the display. It is actually a really nice display. And being reasonably high resolution, it's uh, 224 ppi. It's not the highest density pixel density, but still pretty pretty good. Um, and we come back the other way, and we've got the weather and notes, and then we do have different shortcuts down the bottom, and then another blank panel. So back to the middle. Uh, in terms of the apps and the launcher, um, looks like we've got pretty standard stuff. Uh, the, the Walkman stuff in there. And a couple of the things that are specific to the Sony and the Xperia range of things. We've got FM radio, which uh, wasn't mentioned in the specification we've been provided. But there we go, we've got that as well. Google Plus and all that kind of stuff. Pretty still Fruit Ninja is already there. Music Unlimited and Temple Rum. There's also the Xperia link. Um, we can change the order of those as well. So we go back to the home screen. Um, I think we've got in the corner there is we can add widgets or shortcuts to a home screen there with that little plus in the corner. And down the bottom uh, we have uh, back, home and menu, or well, running a you know, list of recent apps. Uh, what else we've got in the middle here? We have browser calculator, clip manager, notes recorder and other bits there. And then 
The other one is recent searches. Notification area in the corner, we can just pull up, it tells us what wireless network we're connected to. And it's also telling me that there's a system update. I'll avoid that for the moment because obviously that's going to take a little while to run. And then telling us that uh, we have 72% battery and uh, the time, which is uh, not right, but never mind. Um, in terms of apps, let's just get rid of that in the corner. Um, just pop into Chrome, do a little uh, have a look at our site on the display. There's a nice little tick from the keys, uh, which isn't too irritating actually. It's not too loud. It's not uh, haptic feedback though. There's no vibrate uh, on the inside on the key press. But the pages are rendering quite quickly, though noticeably offset. I'm sure we can do that. There we go. Uh, obviously using broadband and Wi-Fi, so it's not an indication of uh, anything else, but uh, pages are loading pretty quickly. Read it out pretty quickly, and the text is really nice and clear. Double tap to zoom in. There we go, and zoom out. There we go. Um, but the text is nice and clear on that display. Um, obviously quite a few pixels to deal with for the rendering of that, and not, then we can quite obviously switch around to portrait. It's pretty quick, and uh, because the display is actually quite uh, wide in terms of number of pixels as well, uh, got uh, 1,200 pixels uh, tall, if you like. Um, 1,200 pixels in this orientation, uh, it means that we're actually getting the full sight there rather than the uh, responsive. So that's pretty cool. Um, but that works, you know, just as much as you would expect. I mean, we've seen Chrome on any number of other devices, but it's smooth enough on this one. So we go back home. And we will pop into again. Let's take a look at the apps. Let's go to YouTube and just have a little bit of a video playback. And uh, we'll just do a quick search for one of my YouTube videos. And anyone will do that one's in the top, so let's just pick that. I'll skip the ad in just a second. So then we'll watch buffer and then we'll just go full screen, we'll turn the volume down a little bit because it's quite loud. Speakers are very loud actually. So there's your full screen playback. And we can skip forward. Uh, so video playback is not bad, I mean most of my videos that are uploaded are 720p and obviously the display itself is capable of quite a bit more, it's beyond uh, beyond HD um, in terms of uh, the actual screen on the device, so it's pretty impressive and uh, you know, the 19-16-9 uh, aspect ratio of the display uh, will lend itself obviously to watching your movies um, and obviously web browsing. Uh, so let's do a little benchmark, uh, just sign into an existing account. And we just let that sign in. It seems very easy to, I would probably like to change the um, sensitivity of the uh, G sensor there because it does seem to want to rotate a little too easy for my liking. It's a little bit sensitive. Um, we're just going to download Quadrant, which obviously we use quite a bit for benchmarking. Obviously there are other benchmarking tools out there but we've been using this for a while and so for consistency we'll use this. So I just pop next to this download. Okay and then it's notifying us in the corner that it's downloading. While well, that's doing that one thing I will do is uh, give it to the home screen and we're going to pop into settings a couple of things I want to look at so firstly I want to change display brightness as far as, as maximum as possible which is pretty bright then we're going to look at the storage so it looks like I have a 16 gig model here because we've got uh, 11.36 available now um, so obviously there's a certain amount taken up by the OS itself and we're going to look at the about and we are indeed on 4.1.2 although there was a notification of an update 
uh, in the corner. So let's go back and run our quadrant and run the full benchmark, which we'll want to run that way around. So let me just pop that down on the table and let that run through without disturbing it. It's running through reasonably quickly. It's making quick progress through the actual benchmark. And we're nearly done, so let's see our benchmark result. There we go, um, 7,105. Um, it's not horrendous by any means. Um, 1.5 quad core processors. I would have perhaps expected a little more from it than that. And certainly there are other way more powerful tablets out on the market um, at the moment. Um, and obviously you pay your money, take your choice. Uh, depending on what you actually, um, you know, size of the device that you want and, and obviously the price you want to pay. But if you're looking for outright performance, then obviously there are other tablets out there that will will beat this with, um, you know, 2.2 and 2.3 gigahertz processors inbuilt. But nevertheless, this isn't disgracing itself by any means. We'll just bring something across underneath and we'll just take a quick look at the camera and the camera interface. So there we go, and we can use the uh, volume up down key to zoom, obviously that's a digital zoom and because of the placement of the actual camera being right over the one side um, I'll have to position the thing, I'm obviously looking at the box of the Z Ultra underneath there so we do have tap to autofocus, uh, we have Superior Auto Normal Video Camera Burst Picture Effects uh, Scene Selection Front Camera we can switch to like so, which isn't pretty and turn the front camera off Oops. that's video mode and we've got different scene selections there let's go back to Superior Auto Settings in the corner for the resolution we can change, so we're not in maximum resolution, there we go, we are now in maximum res, which is obviously 4.3. Um, what else we got there, smile shutter, quick launch, geotagging, uh, data storage, shutter sound and that kind of stuff. And we can switch the camera in this corner as well. So let's just uh, do a little focus there. And a quick snap. And let's see what comes out like. Um, not too bad, there is a bit of noise there Actually, you can pick that out on the video, actually it is a again, compression is an issue and it's one thing that really bugs me about the cameras or software processing in camera phones you can see how much noise and compression compression artifacts that are in that photo it's probably otherwise a very good camera in terms of optics and it's killed by the compression noise but again I go on about that pretty much every time I look at a camera phone so or a phone camera so never mind but it's uh there you go you do have a built-in camera it's an 8 megapixel um 8.1 megapixel actually um so there we go so there you go that's our um little look at the Sony Xperia tablet Z um this is the Wi-Fi model here um, there are there is a, a 3G 4G model out there as well um, but uh, this the 16 gig version 32 gig version is available uh, if you want to ask me any questions or uh, got any feedback uh, regarding the the Xperia Tablet Z or indeed anything else that we're looking at at the moment please follow us on Twitter twitter.com slash Tracy and Matt or facebook.com slash Tracy and Matt and uh, you can also find us on Google Plus if you want to speak to me on Google Plus uh, you can find me at plus Matt Davis one M A T T D A V I S and the number one. Or if you want to speak to the rest of the team, we have a page which is plus Leo D L E O D double -E, -E, 
which is also our YouTube channel name. So if you want to find out anything more about this, then uh, give us some questions. We'll have a full review for this over the uh, next couple of weeks once we've actually had time to sit down and use it, use it properly and in earnest. And uh, we'll be back soon with some more videos and reviews on tracyandmat.co.uk. But for now, thanks for watching.